Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Justin and the Food Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm Justin Bizarro. I'm your host. That's B I double Z A double R O. And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Justin Bizarro. Or you can find us at Justin and the Food Entrepreneurs, uh, both online and Justin the Food Entrepreneurs.com on uh, Podbean. So, Take a look. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. Uh, For those of you who are just listening in for the first time, uh, my background is in the food business, in the beverage business. I've had multiple companies, still run multiple companies in the food business. Um, We have over 380 employees as a company, and we handle well over a million dollars in management of food, $100 million, excuse me in managing a food. So what I'm, why we're doing the podcast is we're sort of wanting everyone to tell their stories and, and food entrepreneurs help other food entrepreneurs, beverage entrepreneurs help other beverage entrepreneurs sort of just through telling the stories of what everyone's going through. So we're on episode 127, pretty impressive, 127 episodes in less than a year. And today uh, we'll be interviewing Dennis Poindexter from Uncle Rocker's Barbecue from Virginia. How are you doing today, Dennis? I'm doing very well today, Justin. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, no, it's uh, Spencer uh, from Spencer's Jerk and Jerky, in case anyone remembers those episodes, is recommended you be on the show. So he's been on two episodes and spoke very highly of you, so it was a no-brainer. Well, that's that's really great to hear. And uh, Spencer's done a lot of stuff with me over the uh, over the past couple of years, and I'm excited to uh, see that he's doing so well with his company. So, I mean, Dennis, you obviously you're 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 running a barbecue company, but tell us a little bit about your background and how you sort of got into this food entrepreneurial space. Well, that's that's a great and interesting question. Um, I am an engineer by trade. Um, I've uh, worked in the communications industry throughout my entire career, spanning over over twenty years. And uh, I worked with Verizon, you know, for the past fifteen years. And then uh, uh, three years ago, they laid me off, and I decided. Uh, you know, I started asking myself, what am I going to do? Uh, how am I going to do something, you know, and support myself and do something that makes me happy all the time? So um, over the years, people have been telling me uh, how great uh, my barbecue was because I'd done several parties and uh, community events. People were telling me that I should go into business. So at that time, that's exactly what I decided to do. I decided to uh, incorporate uh, incorporate myself and it came up with a name and a logo, and uh, just started uh, just started selling barbecue uh, here locally in Loudoun County. Well, and so how did you come up with the name Uncle Rocker's Barbecue? I mean, what's the the brains behind all of that? So <clears throat> it's really interesting. So the um, the foundation and the idea for the company is all based on uh, family members and close friends throughout the years. So Uncle Rockers um, comes from a name or a nickname that I've had since high school. Um, they used to call me Rockhead because I was stubborn and just a just a, a bullheaded guy. And uh, my best friend Jose has always called me Rock or Rocker over the years. And I've known Jose for 35 years. And five years ago, he had a son. And Hunter, to this day, calls me Uncle Rocker. So (laughs) when I was developing the name, uh, I wanted to come up with something that was unique and family-oriented and something um, that would speak to who I was and where I came from. So it sounded to me like a perfect, uh, a perfect name. Well, and, and I love it. And I just want the audience, if you want to find uncle rockers barbecue online, it's literally just uncle rockers, how it's spelled U N C L E R O C K E R S B B Q, uh, dot com. And you can find Dennis on there and his company on there. And I think, I really love the logo, and and I want to describe it to everyone because it's basically a pig on a rocking chair playing his electric guitar, um, and in the one hand is sort of the oven mitt, and uh, it's I love what you've done with it. I actually really like the logo. So, sort of what 
you know, how did you create that? I mean, is it you went to someone or you've had an idea in your head? Uh, kind of a little bit of both. Um, so I had an idea in my head that I wanted to have um, uh, something in the logo that was pig themed. Um, so my girlfriend at the time, her name was Angela, and she had a sister. Her name was Kim, and Kim was a graphic artist. So Kim and I sat down and collaborated uh, over the course of about two months, and we came up with the idea. We had <clears throat> several uh, different variations, but the one that you see as the logo is the one that we decided on and the one that I fell in love with. With and I'm particularly proud that you mentioned the uh, the oven mitt because <laughs> that was kind of a uh, a telltale sign of kind of what we do as far as handling hot stuff. Well, and so okay, let's talk about this more. I mean, now now you've decided decided to do this, you're making a business out of it. Tell me about how you developed the menu, how you came up with the way you do your service. I mean, explain the whole picture. I mean, you do catering, but and you focus on that, but explain to me your your whole theory and your idea behind the business and what your business model is. Uh, my business model right now uh, is to provide the best barbecue uh, using, uh, anywhere to be found, using locally sourced ingredients that I get here from uh, uh, vendors and farms that are, that are local to me. Um, the idea... Uh, comes from um, just uh, so I've cooked my whole life, in my entire life. Uh, the first thing I learned how to cook was scrambled eggs with my grandpa when I was uh, seven years old. So ever since then, I've, I've loved to cook. Um, but I particularly have always loved the idea of people being outside, gathered around a fire, um, smoke in the air, um, just having a wonderful time. And that 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 scene has always um, in my mind has always been very strong to me. Uh, it takes me back to family gatherings and cookouts and things of that nature. So when I was trying to figure out what I was good at, it seemed like a natural thing because I had always, um, over the years had, um, cooked barbecue. Um, my skills have evolved over the years and I've gotten better and better. Um, and it finally came to a point where people Well, this. So I came up with different ideas from watching uh, different uh, cooking shows. Like I grew up watching uh, Justin Wilson and uh, Jean Pepin and those guys. And I always uh, loved it when they would, uh, you know, do the grilling. So that's really where it comes from. Um, my recipes have evolved over time just from trial and error really um and um uh, using things that i like that people have commented on uh to where um they like what i'm doing so it's interesting because i have um three different rubs that i use and i've developed four different sauces um as a result of all of this and so tell me about those what are the what are the rubs and the sauces uh, so <clears throat> I have a rub that I use for all of my, uh, all of my briskets and all of my beef. And it's, it's called, uh, uncle rockers, big, bad beef rub. And it's perfect for using on any kind of, um, uh, beef cut or brisket. I especially use it for my brisket, but it's got uh, a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, a little bit of cayenne and a couple other things in there that I can't tell you about. Um, I have another rub called my um, famous big butt rub, Uncle Rocker's big butt rub, and I use that for um, specifically my ribs. So I have a special rib recipe that I use this rub on. Um, it's got a little bit of sugar, a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of paprika, salt and pepper, and again, a couple other things that I really can't tell you about that are secret to me. Um, but it provides a wonderful, deep and rich flavor throughout the ribs. And really, uh, we try not to use it with any sauce because the flavor is so good. <clears throat> the third rub that I have is a poultry rub that uh, has a little bit of oregano and parsley and onion powder, garlic powder, <clears throat> garlic pepper. And a, again, a couple other things I really can't tell you about, but makes uh, makes all your poultry and fish dishes just come out uh, just delicious and wonderful. And so tell me a little bit about 
you know, how do we, can people order those sauces in the rubs? Is it something you're developing to take to market? Is it, where can they, can people find them online? Um, we're going to start selling them online uh, starting next month. Uh, we're also going to start selling our sauces online uh, next month. And those are really what we're going to uh, going to be pushing. Uh, I have uh, four different types of sauce as well that we're going to be uh, featuring in um, our online store. Um, I have a uh, Kansas City rub that is a, a typical Kansas City style rub that, that we use. Um, my version of it. Um, it's got, uh, it's made with um, honey and uh, a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of um, a little bit of apple juice, uh, a little bit of paprika, and a couple other things that I can't tell you about. That just makes uh, any your barbecue just uh, just wonderful. And we call that Bubba's Bold and Sweet Rub, and that is our house sauce, and it is our most famous sauce that uh, that we do. And that sauce is actually named after my youngest. Uh, his nickname is Bubba, so I figured that that would be a neat name for. Um, you know, for my feature sauce, because I do love them so much. So, and I love barbecue too. So <clears throat> my second rub is named after my grandmother. Um, it's called Gigi's uh, applesauce. So it is a barbecue sauce made with apples and honey and <clears throat> a little bit of vinegar and brown sugar in there to uh, give it a sweet and tangy taste all at the same time. Um, we have a South Carolina style sauce. Um, that is named after um, one of my best friends that is no longer with us, one of the original believers in Uncle Rocker's Barbecue. His name was Timothy Quisenberry, and we call him Quiz. So Quiz's uh, Golden golden Barbecue Sauce is a South Carolina-style barbecue sauce that has a little bit of mustard, a little bit of brown sugar, um, honey, and vinegar in there. So it's uh, tangy and sweet all at the same time. So it's very delicious and very, uh, very tangy all in one bite. And it's very delicious on um, poultry as well. So the final sauce we have is a style sauce. And we call that one Rockin' the Shack. And it's your typical North Carolina style sauce made with uh, a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of vinegar, and red pepper flake for the, uh, for the tang. So... Those are our four sauces, and uh, I'm super proud of them, and I'm proud that we're going to be able to um, start featuring them in our online store in the coming months. Well, and I think that's that's pretty awesome. And, I mean, so are you using a co-packer to, to put those together for you? Uh, I am currently researching co-packers to, uh, to perform it on a mass scale, but right now it's all me. Myself and I. Yeah, no, I understand that, and and we do a lot of co-packing in our business. So, you know, the, you've got to start somewhere before you can go that direction and start getting sales in. Uh, usually, unless you have money sitting around just to sit on inventory, which not many people want to do, and take money out of their business and growth and marketing to do that and put it into product that may not move. But so let me, um, so let me understand that. You, I mean, so you've got you do the catering thing, and now a natural progression from there is to sort of get into these sauces and these rubs for the public, which I, I love the idea. I mean, you can't cater all over the United States, but what you can do is sell your sauces and your rubs all over the United States. So that's sort of the goal there, I would assume. Uh, that is correct, and that that's the idea, <clears throat> and that's, that's the um, kind of the – kind of the new uh, model that I want to pursue. I, I always want to do the catering and I always want to um, stick with serving my food to, um, you know, um, you know, the weddings and the, you know, and the, the corporate events and everything that we do. But I also would like to reach a uh, wider market. I would like to, uh, you know, reach the dad and the cousins, you know, that are uh, cooking barbecue in their backyard. And I would love to uh, have them use uh, Uncle Roger's uh, rubs and sauces to do so. And I think that's that's a great idea, and I think it's a natural progression um, for your business. Is now you know they work. What better way to test if they they work by doing the catering events? So people like them. You're getting real feedback at real events, and so you know they work. So now it's just a matter of bringing them to the industry, starting to use word of mouth to get them out to everyone else. So I think it's a great model. So. 
Dennis, let me ask you a question because you said you're an engineer by trade, I believe. I did. And so you're neither a business person, businessman, or entrepreneur by background, or a chef by background. So, you know, what are some of the things in both of those areas that you've sort of had to learn from? What are some of the hardships? What are some of the things you've learned from not having a background in either one of those? Oh, my goodness. There's so many lessons learned. And one of the things that I say all the time um, since I've um, started running this company is that uh, I'm a great barbecue cook and I can do it in my sleep and I'm excellent at it. And, you know, people love it. Uh, But the hard part about running the business is actually knowing the part about running the business. So the lessons for me as far as that goes are how much um, interaction you need to do with regulatory and keeping up with making sure that um, all of your paperwork is straight and all of your insurance is straight and all of your accounting is straight. And all of the all of those things are things that I had no idea about, but uh, I'm quickly learning about um as far as the cooking goes and being a chef uh goes or not or not being a a chef by training um goes um i do have over 40 years of cooking uh cooking barbecue in very in one various form or another uh my sister-in-law would tell you that when i first started i wasn't really so good (laughs) because she watched me burn a hamburger uh black on the outside pink on the inside so she to this day she makes fun of me and uh makes me humble (laughs) in in that way but I, i will say um that judging how much to prepare for any given job has proven to be a challenge because in some events, you know, people order for a certain amount of people, whether it be a hundred or 200 people, and we can gauge for that. But if we're doing an event where we're at, let's say a winery or a brewery, then it's kind of hard to judge, you know, the foot traffic that's going to be in there and how many people are going to show and how much product am I going to have to buy? How much you want to waste because not people, not that many people came, or I sold out because I didn't make enough. Um, it's all in um, trying to hit that perfect sweet spot so that you know you're not um, doing any unnecessary work or wasting any unnecessary product as well. So that's what have been a lot of the, the lessons that I've learned. Yeah, and I think that's it's food waste is one of the hardest things to manage, right? In in the food business, it, it really is. It really truly is. I, I yeah, I've thrown away um, after various events so much stuff that just makes me sad because a lot of times you can't use it again, and you know that <clears throat> it was it's perfectly good, but because the event's over, you can't resell it. You know, you can't really do anything with it. So having to um, having to forecast that and to hit the numbers so that you don't do that is a real challenge. So, I mean, one of the things that I think is if I come to you and I'm like, Dennis, like I'm really looking to start X, Y, Z barbecue company. Let's argue or not barbecue company, catering company. Let's say it's, I don't know what I'll make up something. I'm going to do Mexican catering. What would be the advice that you would give me? My advice would be to talk to as many people um, that are doing the same thing that you want to do um, as possible. Um, The advice, the stewardship um, and the mentorship that I've learned or that I've gained um, throughout the years um, in talking to um, some of the people that do um, the same thing. Uh, when I first had the idea to do um, Uncle Rockers has been invaluable to me. The idea for Uncle Rockers has been a 15-year idea, Uh, but it only came to fruition um, a couple of years ago with with the situation with Verizon. So during that time, um, I've attended a lot of barbecues and talked to a lot of people um, that do barbecue. There are a couple of people that um, really stick out in my mind. Um, This guy, Susie, um, from Suzy Q's catering, um, in, in Maryland, um, is a particular, uh, example 
um, to me. One of the original people that told me um, that you have the skills and you have the ability um, to, to do this. And this is the way that I do it. It doesn't make it right, but this is how I do it. So I always remember that. And um, that's one of the one of the ones as far as uh, mentors and people that uh, have inspired me that has really um, allowed me to have the courage to do this. And I mean, how, I mean, let's let, I mean, I really want to talk about that because I think mentorship is just so important in any business relationship or any growth in any field for in particular. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, I mean, if you were to really hone in on, on that and, and talk about mentorship and recommend it to someone, if someone came to you and said, you know, Dennis, I, you know, you said, you, you mentioned this thing on the podcast about mentoring, you know, how, I mean, what are the benefits of it that you think are so important? Some of the benefits that are so important is it allows you to get a perspective of how things um, should be done from someone that is currently doing what you want to do. Um, I had a guy um, that runs a place called the Pit Stop, um, and it's a famous barbecue spot here in in Loudoun County. And he's been there for a very long time. He's got all kinds of rewards. He's been written up in the paper. Again, when I was um, – and it said uh, – this place called Gilbert's Corner, and there's always people lined up. So about 10 years ago, uh, when I was having this this idea that I was thinking about doing my own company, um, I got the courage up to go and talk to this guy, and he spent about four hours with me uh, walking around his rig, walking around his setup, um, explaining you know, how he does things, explaining why – at that time, it was better for him to have <clears throat> a spot on the side of the road as opposed to a um, a brick and mortar restaurant, and just giving me advice about those kinds of things. So, uh, in talking to people like that, it allowed me to formulate and to um, think about my model of the business and how I wanted to run my business. Um, the way that I wanted to using, you know, um, the ideas that those guys had, that those guys had as a baseline. Um, the thing about mentorship is it does give you ideas and it does give you a baseline and it does allow you to, you know, aspire to achieve what you want to do. And it also, and it also stops you from, making mistakes you know if you know by talking to people you can you know they all a lot of times say this is where i went wrong this is what i did don't do this you know you know, you know um that kind of thing so it's 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 a two-headed thing and it's it's beneficial in both ways to me well and it, i would recommend that to anyone um you know that is starting out or even is currently doing it to talk to people that do the same thing you do talk to people that um inspire you that you know that have been doing it for a long time and are successful at it because um the little nuggets and tidbits that they give you can absolutely help you and help you to uh to grow your business i know that it has with me in mind and i want to extrapolate on that because i think it, there's a couple of things that are so important to what you said which is one is getting into a business Learning it yourself is hard. You're still going to have to learn things yourself and go through your own experiences, but finding someone that's already been through it can certainly help guide you through that and not make as many ex uh, mistakes, and they can accelerate your your learning curve and accelerate the business curve to where you get to break even and where you get to a little more successful and where you can grow your business. The, the second part of it is, is if you find the right mentors, you want to outgrow them because they want to give you all, you want to get all their knowledge possible and then you want to grow a level further, which means Correct. in that you should always be making sure that it's, that you're looking for not just one mentor, but you're always looking for mentors that can help you st stand up and go to that next level and grow, you know? So, you know, in my own life, I've had mentors. I've had mentors in the food business, mentors in our own company who have who've been in the food business or in the food production business longer than I have. But then, you know, they and they've been great. But something happens, you know, the right, you know, it's like a Jedi movie. It's like Star Wars. You know, Yoda says to Luke Skywalker in the last Star Wars that 
you know, it's great when the, um, you know, master is outgrown by the whatever his disciple. By the pupil, right? Yeah, the student, by the pupil. The master. That's right. That's and that's what you want because that's the only way we continue to grow forward. There'd be no point in growing to the level that everyone's at. Then there's no point in giving back. You want to give back so that person grows beyond you and takes the skills to the next level. And I think that's hugely important. I think anyone who wants to be a mentor, you know, you really need to keep that in mind. It's not, you know, it's not about competition. It's how can I better the next generation or how can I better this person because it's the right thing to do. And maybe I might learn something from them too. I think that's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's one of the, one of the great things that I've learned and I've experienced by um, being a barbecue guy, because um, you would think that everybody would be, you know, um, very uh, protective and competitive, you know, of, of their skills and knowledge. But I've found it's the complete opposite. Um, it's such a great community. Everybody wants to share and to grow and to um, have camaraderie and to see everyone else uh, grow and represent um, this thing that we do. Well, and it's surprising, you know, a competition, one, is good for any business because there's multiple people in it. But the second thing is, is mentoring someone, like you're not going to do it exactly how they are and they're going to differentiate. And the only way to differentiate is learn how the best that are doing it now are doing it and then differentiate from there based on what's true to you and authentic to you. And that becomes your business because you're the per- you're the face of the business. And most food businesses, no matter how big and large you are, there's a face to it, you know. And I'm not talking like Kellogg's or Nestle anymore, um, you know. When you're that huge, I'm talking about more like the restaurants and the the food production and the the l- smaller packaging or the sauces that you're talking about. You're the face of it, so your differentiator most of the time is you and, and your spirit. And obviously, you want a good product, but having those mentors to show you what they're doing allows you to also start to get creative and differentiate yourself. That, that is correct. And that is, uh, also getting back to, uh, differentiating myself uh, as far as, you know, my barbecue goes, um, you, you asked me earlier, how did I come up with some of the ideas for my, um, you know, recipes or rubs? Um, I have a library of about 300 books that I've read uh, on barbecue um, over the years from, you know, the, the Myron Mixons, the Chris Hunts, the Chris Hurts, um, uh, you know, Stephen Rankling, all, all of those guys. So I've taken a lot of the, the ideas that they've had um, and kind of made – my own thing, uh, which is, ties into exactly what you're talking about as, as far as um, that mentoring thing, even though they weren't mentors in a physical per- portion, um, in, a, in, a, in a mental, uh, in a way, they, w- they were. So taking some of the stuff and some of the tips and some of the ideas that they've had uh, and reading their ideas and thoughts um, has shaped my own uh, thought process and, and coming up with my own ideas for rubs and sauces as well. Well, and I, and I love the point you just made is the reading part. And anyone who's out there, whether you're food business or what it's, you've got to read, you know, there's no other way to learn it. I know a lot of people watch videos on YouTube and it teaches you things, but there's Correct. something about actually reading the words on a page in terms of, the way the human mind works to educate us on what we're trying to do. And we need to do that. If you're interested in being a food entrepreneur, you need to study what it is that you're going to do. You're not just going to be great at it. That doesn't mean you can't differentiate or you're not going to disrupt some business or food or whatever that's out there, but you need to have an understanding of, of actually what's out there. Or, you know, if you want to be in business and you're unsure, read a book. You know, I try to, read at least a a book a month, if not a book a week, just because mm-hmm. I need to be constantly learning. And I don't know it all. And the world changes at such a rapid rate right now that trying to stay up with it is pretty important. And I think the reading part that you said that you're a student of barbecue, you know, you're a lifetime student of barbecue. That I am. And, yeah. and, I, and I think that's so key because a lot of people get into business and they forget about the educational piece. They, f- they get into food and they open the restaurant and they forget to keep educating themselves. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's, it's a, I've found that it's a constant, constant learning thing uh, or running a business. Um, there is so much that I don't know that I'm that I'm continuing to learn. Um, <clears throat> as, as I said before, um, I, I cook some of the best barbecue you've ever had in your life. Uh, hands down, I know that uh, people tell me that all the time, and I appreciate that. Um, again, the the thing goes back to learning how to um, gain the still the skills necessary to have a successful and viable business, and those are the things that um, I've been focused on and have been uh, consistently learning about. And so that being said, I mean, what motivates you and inspires you on a daily basis? You know, I really love it when people are happy. Um, have you ever seen anybody mad around barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, really, have you ever seen anybody mad around barbecue? Uh, no, no. Um, so that's one of the things I love, making people smile and making people happy with the food that they eat, um, the barbecue that I eat, the love and the passion um, that I put into it uh, really makes me happy. A lot of people ask me, why don't I do a lot of competitions as far as going out and winning trophies? Um, to me, um, that's not really important to have trophies and to be recognized um, like that. To me, the payoff and the great thing and the great thrill that I get from serving my barbecue to people when I'm out at events or doing catering is the smile that they get. And when they say, my goodness, Dennis, or my goodness, Uncle Rocker, that was some great barbecue. And that is the thing that makes me happy. And and I think that's important is that the so important that the customer have that experience and enjoy what they have. And winning a trophy is a very small group of people awarding it and it is something that people can be proud of and i did this and it helps promote a brand but at the end of the day the same amount of time put into feeding 300 400 500 people at an event and the word of mouth that has the dollars just go a lot further because you're able to have people taste it so i agree with you i i think the experience um of doing it is you know, there is awards for sure in any type of business or food business. But I think to your point, I agree with that a lot. I think recognition for the people that recognition matters for is important. But in your case, what matters is people's happiness and level of response to good food and sort of the love. I mean, it's a loving nature that happens. It's one of the reasons I love food. And I, you know, no matter how many things I start to stray off the food or go into a business that's not exactly food oriented or, or invest in one. It never really catches me like food because of the happiness food brings to people and the mm-hmm. loving nature of it. And so that's pretty, pretty crazy. I mean, obviously you, you want to worry about food safety and things like that. So you don't harm anyone, but absolutely, but absolutely. It's, <laughs> but it's uh so much love and care around food. So I think that's pretty, pretty amazing. It, it, it really is. And it's, it's funny that you, that you mentioned uh, food safety because, um, y- you know, you do have to be, uh, and this is one of the things I didn't know is uh, you have to be licensed by the health department to actually serve out, um, at events and everything like that. So, um, you know, one of the partners that I've partnered with is here, here locally in Loudoun County is a place called Chefscape and they are, and they have a great, um, idea and we need to get them on here onto your podcast because their, their story is amazing. Uh, but they have an idea for a shared kitchen where a small businesses such as mine, uh, that do catering and things like that can, um, have a full commercial kitchen, uh, health department inspected uh, to, um, you know, serve the community and, and have the stamp of approval from the health department. So um, that's one of the things that I've also learned and um, has also helped me in my business is to find, um, you know, great partnerships. And that's just one of them that, that I have. I'm so proud and honored to uh, be a part of those guys because it's also allowed me to, uh, to grow. One, well, I love that. I think that that the more of the community that gets involved and the more opportunities, the more people that have sort of that, I don't know, for lack of a better term, incubator model of helping people grow and give them the Mm -hmm. space to grow 
and provide that, the better off we are. And, you know, we're, we are living in a world now where people's, you know, before I'll give an example of coffee or even let's just use barbecue before everyone likes certain types of barbecue sauce. I think there was probably Heinz barbecue sauce and, you know, <laughs> sweet baby uh, rays and maybe someone else's. Yeah. Back in the day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you had like three sauces. Well, that's right. Guess what's happened? People realize that they can have more of a choice and they can get really, um, you know, molecular for lack of a better term down to the minuscule details of the sauces that they like. So now there's more varieties. Why? Because we as human beings realize we can have more of that variety. And as more of that happens and we become more individualistic in our, in our likes and our wants, you know, having more options is, is what's happening in business. And so there's more opportunity for food entrepreneurs to find space amongst all of this. You know, microbreweries are a great example. There were how many breweries around the country 50 years ago, and now there's how many microbrews uh, across right. the country. Because across why? The country. <laughs> people, people cater to specific tastes now. That's exactly right, and, and it's amazing, and it's 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 interesting that you um, uh, mentioned you know the the breweries and the wineries because here in Loudoun County um, they have uh, g- grown exponentially um, over the past couple of years, and so there's you know you can throw a rock a rock and hit a brewery, you, you know you can throw a rock and hit a winery out here, so um, you know we've been doing a lot of those and a lot of. Um, partnering with a lot of uh, those guys to get food out there and it's it's just everywhere and it's it's all dependent on that variety and giving people a an option and a choice to have different styles different flavors different manufacturing techniques anything and everything that um, makes a person's palate they can have and that's a great thing yeah i think that's actually super super important for for people to have i mean why not and to make it available in the amazons in the world and and you know we're sort of flattening the world but also giving people the ability to really choose what they want you know if i'm living in loudon county now and i love uncle rocker's barbecue but then i have to move to you know colorado springs colorado for example uh, since I'm out of Denver, that's the example I'm going to use. I can now order your barbecue sauces and your rubs online over, you know, coming in the next few months. And so, you know, that's where we get to take it with us. That's the world we live in. It's it's in co-packaging and labeling and and the education process and nutritional labels and and all of that and all, the all resources. Of that. That's correct. Uh, yeah. That's... Speaking of learning things, you know, we've got, uh, you know, we've got all of our licensing and our labels and, you know, all of our nutritional labels. We're ready to go. We just need to start production. But the process um, of gaining all of those things, of gaining all of the the, the rights to um, have the ability to, to use those is a lot of paperwork and a lot to learn. So, um it's one of the things that I've also learned. And they're, they're, again, going back to there's a lot to learn and a lot to know about the um, administrative side of uh, of running a business. Yeah, I think it's um that's it's crazy. So when you cater events, uh, Dennis, how do you find employees and people to help you with the events? I mean, that's you know because it's not a twenty four hour seven day a week thing i can imagine so are they sort of temporary or how does that all happen so all of the people that work with me and they all work with me and not for me they all like to call me the boss i'm not the boss i'm just you know uh you know a guy that just happens to run the show um so all of all of the people that work with me all have you know day jobs and they all do, you know, their own thing. So, you know, I've got engineers and bartenders and uh, car mechanics and FedEx guys, you know, that, that all work. For me. I have as many as uh, 20 people that I can call in to do an event at any one time. Typically, I don't need that many. Um, so when I need someone, we typically forecast about a month in advance. Um, I start to, <clears throat> you know, game, I, game who's available, who's not. Uh, we put them on the calendar, we lock them in and, uh, you know, we go do the event and luckily we haven't really had any headaches 
or hiccups doing that. Everyone um, that I've chosen to be a part of my team um, is wonderful. And they're very flexible and great. And whenever I need them, be it on the weekends or um, for an office party during the week, um, out of that pool of 20, um, there's always someone that can uh, lend a hand for, you know, those couple hours. And I think that's awesome. And the loyalty there from those people to to just come whenever you need them, I think, is pretty amazing. Yes. Um, and it's really cool and, and to build that relationship. And, and I'm going to refer back to two episodes ago, which we we interviewed um, Reggie Kelly, who, who's also doing barbecue sauces and salsas out of Atlanta. But he one of the things, he's a former NFL player, and one of the things he said that he learned in the NFL is they always say that teamwork makes the dream work. And what you're doing is exactly that. It's taking, it's the teamwork that makes the dream work and, and your humility to say, hey, like I, you know, this may be my company, but I'm not the boss. We're a team and we need to do this together sort of flattens that, you know, decentralizes things where everyone feels they have ownership in what's going on and, and really matter for the outcome. And that's, that's one of the things that I pride myself on as far as, um, uh, as far as that relationship goes, um, I genuinely love all the people that have helped me out because without them, um, I would have not been able to get as far as I have. Yes, <clears throat> I can cook the food all day long, um, but it, you know, for anybody that knows barbecue, it takes, you know, 14, 18, 20 hours, depending on what you're doing. So by the time you cook and then you go to serve and set up and break down and do all those things, it's exhausting. It's a lot of work. So you have to have people um, that you can rely on um, to, to do those things. And I've been fortunate enough and blessed enough to um, have a team of people that uh, that do that for me. When we've been talking about this in, in our company at Food Service Partners as well, is how do you, you know, getting people to really go the extra mile? Because you're right. Well, it could be 14 hours, but sometimes things go wrong and it takes 17 hours. So how do you get people to go that extra mile or that extra hour or, or motivate them and inspire them to do it? And a lot of it has to do with the culture you create, you know, from day one. And from day if, one, and if it's not there, you better start figuring out how to create it now, um, or or take what's there and build upon it. Because you know what you're doing, Dennis, is exactly that. You've built a culture for for those people to come in and take pride in what they're doing. Oh yeah, um, without without uh, without Spencer, without Travis, without uh, Emily, without Janae, uh, without. Um, all of those people, you know, uh, Eric and Kelly that have helped, um, over the time, I would not have been able to do it, um, to this level so far, even though I'm still small time hoping to get big time. Um, it's still a team effort and I still really, uh, am thankful to, uh, to have those guys associated with, uh, with the company. Yeah, I think it's a it's a pretty big deal. I think it's it's what you're doing is a good thing, and I think the growth for your company is a good thing. And I think the way you treat your employees, and I actually this is not a think, this is something I know. The better they you treat them, and the better culture you give them, the more successful your business becomes over the long run. And it's exactly what you're doing, and I I really think it's it's so cool what you're doing. So, you know, not many people well, would you. would go get get laid off from a job and sort of be like, I'm going to go in the food business and really make a run at it and still be doing it all these le years later. A lot of people give up the, the hardship, the it's too hard, or I got myself over my head, but you've become a student of it, which I love the reading, the books, the, the diving into it and doing it, you know, taking something that you were passionate about and taking it to the next level, which I think is just so key. So um, Dennis, as we wrap up here, one, I would love to get you back on the podcast here. Um, now that you've gotten your first one over with maybe in the next few months to continue to tell your story and hear how the barbecue sauce and the rubs go. But as we finish off, is there anything that you want to tell the audience or that you feel that would be really beneficial to someone who is, who is trying to start their own business? I, I would say to anyone that wants to, 
<clears throat> start their own business is to believe in yourself. Um, believe with all that you are that you can do what it is that you set out to do. Um, it's going to be hard. There is going to be a lot of roadblocks. People are going to tell you no. Um, money's going to run out. Situations are going to be tight. Things are going to be tough. But if you stick with it and you truly believe, um, then it will happen. And that's what I believe. And that's what I would tell anyone. And, and I love it, Dennis. I think you've, you've got it spot on because that belief also helps you sell your vision to your customers, sell your vision to your employees and keep the ship moving forward and staying afloat and, and growing and, and all of that. So I think you're 100% spot on and I really appreciate your time for sure. Well, Justin, I really appreciate, uh, you taking the time to, uh, you know, to interview me and to talk with me and to, uh, learn a little bit more about uncle rocker's barbecue. And, um, it, it really has been a pleasure and I would love to do this again and I look forward to it. Awesome. Anyone in the audience, uh, thank you guys for listening in. Again, you can find Uncle Rocker's Barbecue online. That's UncleRockersBBQ.com online. And, you know, reach out to them on Instagram and Facebook. They have great sites. You really get a feel of, of who Uncle Rocker is or Dennis is by looking at that stuff. And if you're in Virginia, I recommend going to try the barbecue as well as, you know, Dennis will talk more next time on, you know, the sauces and the rubs and how people can get their hands on those when they're launched. So we'll wrap back around and do another episode for sure. Fantastic. I look forward to it. Um, it has been an honor uh, and a pleasure. Uh, feel free to look us up online, on, on Instagram, on Facebook, like you just said, at UncleRockersBarbecue.com. Justin, um, I look forward to speaking with you again. Hopefully we'll have a lot of good news to speak about the next time that we do. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again, Dennis. I really appreciate it. And, and thank you, everyone, for listening in, and have a great day. Thank you so much. really appreciate you.